in your beauty and go to sleep and think, yeah, I know what I'm doing. No, you don't know what you're doing. Don't be looking at what's happening next door when things inside your house aren't going well. Complaining all the time that life is so hard where you're studying, or oh, in China this, or oh, in Russia that. Oh, students in the UK are doing this. All oh, students in Africa, they're going to the hospital. But where you are, you're not even going to the hospital. Where you are, you're not even studying. You're failing your exams, you're doing all this talking but there's very little action showing that you actually want to be a good student. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Natalie Caitlin and my channel name is the stylish man. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new here, please do subscribe to my channel and join the family. And if you're not new here, thank you so much for coming back again. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about something that I'm really, I want to say I'm passionate about, but it's something that I see a lot, I get asked about a lot, and I actually feel like I need to answer this. Like, I feel like I need to to say something about this and that is studying medicine abroad okay so backstory i studied in ukraine for a bit before i went to china and then i finally studied in china and finished there i have friends that studied in china studied in ukraine studied in russia studied in germany studied in cuba studied all around the world in the states australia the uk back in africa south africa zimbabwe zambia um ghana tanzania i have friends that studied everywhere okay and with all my friends that stayed abroad, it's always the same thing that's being said over and over again. Oh, I feel like what I'm studying is not the same as back home, as it's not the same as this place, it's not the same as that place. Or oh, I feel like we don't know anything. I feel like studying medicine in this and this country is bad because of this and this and this and that. So today I've come with a video and I'm gonna be telling you guys how to survive studying medicine abroad no matter where you are but as long as you're studying medicine in a place that is not your home okay so without wasting too much time let's get right into it number one okay acknowledge acknowledge the fact that you're studying medicine abroad and that there are going to be differences what i mean by this is there is no way you can expect to say that i'm studying medicine in china i'm studying medicine in russia i'm studying medicine in korea and japan and it's the same as studying medicine in South Africa. There's, okay, it's not gonna happen. You guys are doing different things. You're doing medicine, both of you. It's the human body, yes, but the way the programs are set up is even different. There's gonna be differences in the program itself, the duration, the degree given, the course outline, the curriculum, the Syllabus, the the topics and diseases you learn might even be different, believe it or not. You might learn the same diseases, yes, but the focus given on those diseases is definitely going to be different. Let me give you an example. In Africa, HIV and AIDS is a very big topic. It's a very common um, topic that you're expected to easily understand. You're expected to know it from the top of your head. In my middle school in China, we did HIV and AIDS as a subtopic of a subtopic and we literally did it in like a 30 or 45 minute period and we moved on and never looked back at it things like tb things like malaria things like you know there's a lot of diseases that you're going to find that back home if you're african or wherever you are maybe copd and lung cancer and whatnot are the common things where you come from and where you're studying that's not what you see so it just depends where you're going and where you're studying and where you're coming from definitely acknowledge that there's going to be some differences and accept those differences don't say oh i'm studying in china we don't even do aids because obviously you don't do aids because that's not a prevalent topic there okay they have diseases there that they're going to make you focus on and we did we focus on the common things that we see in china when we're studying in china you're going to have to deal with the fact that people will go to the hospital more or less or at different times than you for example um i know like in african med schools like from second year third year people are in the hospital during rounds with the doctors 
In China, maybe around fourth year or end of third year, that's when you'll start off, but you're not doing much. And then in your final year, that's when you're fully in the hospital. In some countries like in China, you get to do an internship before you graduate. In other countries, there's no such thing. So just acknowledge all those differences and accept them. And that will help you when it comes to making a plan on how to bridge the gap between where you're studying and where you want to be and this leads me to the next point which is number two know what others are doing don't just be studying there where you're studying abroad in your little bubble and not know what people back home or what people where you want to work are doing if you're studying I want to keep giving China as an example because I studied in China and I'm not Chinese, obviously. Um, so I want to keep giving that as an example. If in China people are using Chinese textbooks or using this kind of material, or what are people in America using, what are people in the UK using, what are people back home using, you need to know what they're doing, what they're studying, what their course outline looks like, what's required of them and what's required of you. Compare that and as you set up your studies, it's really important that you set time in your study session somehow to bridge that gap because if your plan isn't to work where you're studying abroad and your plan is to work back home, you're gonna chances are you're gonna to have to either write a board exam or meet some kind of assessment that's gonna to have to make you at the same level as those people. And it's gonna be really hard if the first time you're seeing what they studied is if when you've already graduated. So it's really important that you get the books that they're using use them and you know kind of just know what's going on back home wherever around the world and you know keep yourself at the same level at a slower pace but still you know reaching the same goal and so with being aware of what others are doing i think i've already i've already gone on into the next point which is get the books get the resources get whatever other people around the world are using especially back home and more importantly where you want to work if you're studying abroad and back home is another country and you want to work in a different country obviously it makes sense for you to know what's going on back home but more importantly what's going on in the country where you actually want to practice as a doctor what i used to do when i was studying is during the semester i would read my class PPTs, my lecture notes, and the books that the teachers recommended. And I would also use books that were being studied by people back home, people in the States or the UK, and just like around the world, like the common books that people around the world outside China are using, I would use those for my studies. And then closer towards the exam, I'd then bring back my focus and just like focus in more on what's actually happening in China. Because obviously before you go and start working, you have to pass your exam in China first. So you have to really strike a balance. Don't just be focused on what's happening outside where you're studying but also remember that for you to get outside where you're studying you need to pass where you're studying first so make sure things are okay here before you you know start looking outside not even just like books only and studying resources and all that but even just like watching videos from like renowned online professors and whatnot my favorite i think i'm like dr najib is gonna have to shout me out one day because i am always plugging those videos but dr najib is a really 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 good teacher you guys like he's he will make you understand things in ways you never thought possible and so i feel like especially for those of you that are studying like in russia and china um in cuba and in countries that english is not the first language and sometimes you struggle to understand what your professors are saying it's really like Dr. Jeeves' videos will really help you understand and he explains the basics so simply that you'll even kick yourself for not knowing in the first place. And um, if you guys struggle with finding textbooks and resources and stuff, I have a playlist of videos where I share all the resources and books you need for all the courses and subjects in med school, so definitely do go and check this out over here and um, I'll also leave it in the description box. Step number four is to do electives, lectures. Spend as much time in the hospital as you can, especially if you're an African student studying abroad. Um, in Africa, it's very hands-on. Medicine is very hands-on. Students are in the hospital like from the very, very beginning. And I feel like even in India as well, a lot of my Indian classmates used to complain about this when we were back in school, that their um, colleagues and people back in India were doing a lot more practically than they were. And so you really want to make sure that whenever you can go to the hospital, if you go home, for like summer or winter break or whatever, spend at least two weeks in a hospital near to you. Like apply for a clerkship, an elective, a volunteership, an observationship, whatever it's called, the ship. 
just go and be in the hospital and see what's happening in the hospital because chances are you're going to learn a lot that you wouldn't have learned in your um, class time and even if you don't go back home what i used to do was during my holidays i would actually talk to my professors and ask them oh can i come and you know rotate with you during holidays and they would let me and i would learn a lot more than they had actually taught um, in the classes because they would teach us what's required of them to teach but they don't go you know over and beyond and start explaining to you things that they've learned from the experience but when you're actually in the hospital with them things start coming back to them that they're like oh you should know this or you should know that and so it's really important to get as much extra time in the hospital as you can and that'll kind of help you like bridge that gap between what's going on in class and what's going on you know everywhere else and in the hospital and all that and you'll just generally feel like you're on top of your game and it will give you more confidence because i think one thing as well that people that say it abroad like is confidence i definitely lacked confidence when i came and did my final year in Botswana, I did not have confidence at all, at all. Like, I thought I didn't know anything. But when I came, I realized, okay, um, theory-wise, we were the same. I always say this. There were students from Australia and there were students from Cambridge University at the time that we were doing our first rotation in the hospital. And during, like, rounds, we always seemed to know the same things in terms of, like, theory. But the difference really showed, like, in practical stuff. Like, they really knew what they were doing, like, when it comes to practicals and things like that. Some of us hadn't even taken blood before and so there was definitely like a gap so if you spend more time in the hospital you'll definitely be able to you know bridge that gap and so if you're studying in china specifically and you know your university allows you to do your internship outside china for your final year for the love of god go <laughs> go home if you have plans of studying outside china you have no business doing your final year in china if they allow you to leave china okay for me this wasn't even an option like yes i could have stayed because the language this and i'm always saying this but it wasn't an option because i always knew that i don't want to work there that's not my end goal that's not my end destination so if you know that you want to work somewhere else go and be as close to that somewhere else as you possibly can um i have a video where i listed the reasons and and you know my experience with my internship outside china so definitely do check it out it explains why i left china why i didn't do my internship there and my experience doing my internship outside my regrets if any and the pros and the cons so definitely do check that video out and so yeah if however you're not allowed to you know go outside china then i do recommend that you choose a hospital where there's going to be a lot of practical learning because you're not going to gain much more theory than you already have um when you're doing your internship there but at least you will at least be able to better your practical skills step number five is stay on top of your game wherever you are imagine being this person you're complaining all the time that life is so hard where you're studying or oh, in china this or oh, in russia that oh in this place this or oh, in this place that oh students in the uk are doing this all oh, students in africa they're going to the hospital but where you are you're not even going to the hospital where you are you're not even studying you're failing your exams you're doing all this talking but there's very little action showing that you actually want to be a good student wherever you are like start where you are focus on you know passing your exams there first and then start looking outside don't be looking at what's happening next door when things inside your house aren't going well no matter how like we can complain and say oh if you studied here it's not the same as studying somewhere else at the end of the day, you're both going to have a transcript. You who studied where you studied, a person who studied at Cambridge, a person who studied at Harvard, a person who studied, um, a person who studied in South Africa, in Zimbabwe, in Zambia, in Botswana, wherever they studied, you're all going to have a transcript. And at the end of the day, the person who has a transcript that looks good, regardless of where they studied, they will get recognition. If you studied at Harvard and you were getting D's and E's, and you studied at some random university in japan in korea in china and wherever and you had a stars and a's you will definitely get some recognition they're not going to be like okay no you studied there we don't care about you no at the end of the day they look at your individual effort and your results and your um you know your abilities and your skills they're not going to look and start comparing the country yes they might say oh well that's the china tend to not do this but if they say that and then they see that okay you're actually doing well you actually know what you're doing you're still going to be fine you're going to get the same opportunities as everyone else but if your transcript has d's and e's and you also studied in a place that is generally just 
looked down upon, then you're not doing yourself any favors there either. So at least make sure that you're on top of your game wherever you're studying before you even start trying to, you know, um, bridge the gap. Number six, make sure you have a support system. I feel like this is really important. Studying medicine is hard. Studying medicine abroad is even harder. Studying medicine in a country that is so totally different from your own, they don't speak the language that you speak, is even, even, even harder. So it's really important that you have a support system, you have something to fall back on whenever you're going through it all, whenever you have family issues, relationship issues, whatever issues you have, it's really important that you have something you like to do, a hobby, um, a pastime, um, someone you can talk to, you know, a support system basically, and a self-care mental health check care system and then also it's important to remember why you started um don't forget that at some point you were actually crying to go wherever it is that you're studying now now that you're there comfortable you start talking crap about it and forgetting that you cried to get there whenever you're complaining remember that at some point you're crying to get there and appreciate how far you've come work hard and keep it moving okay <laughs> And then, and then finally, don't get comfortable. Like, as much as I'm saying, um, know what's going on where you are first before you start trying to look what's happening outside, it's also really important not to overdo it. Don't get so comfortable in the Chinese system that you forget that number one, you're not Chinese. Number two, you're not gonna work in China. Number three, where you're going is totally different from China or wherever you're studying. It's really important that you keep yourself on your toes, keep you know working harder, keep getting better. When you feel like you understand something, aim for higher score. When you feel like you got a higher score, aim for an even higher score. When you feel like you got the highest score, start looking at what people outside um, China are doing. Start, start looking at what people at, you know, in the rest of the world are doing. Start using their standards. Start trying to read their books and trying to pass their exams. Always keep yourself on your toes and that will really, really, really go a long way in helping you be as proficient and as competent as people um, in the rest of the world. Like, um, yes, you are studying medicine, you are studying in China, but remember that that is not your final destination. Every time when you have exams, remember that um, there's people in the country where you want to work that are already studying for the exams that they need to pass to work there, and you are still there doing your Chinese exams before you even have to write theirs. So it's always important to just you know keep that in mind so that that keeps you going, that keeps you working harder. When you start to like slack off and start to you know work less harder use that to boost you and motivate you to work even harder because there's work to be done here and there's gonna be work to be done back home as well really guys i can't stress this enough don't get comfortable if you're there in china studying lashes ppt and the people that are in south africa where you want to work are there reading books and stuff you have no business reading one large ppt you need to be getting on the books you need to be doing revision guides past papers etc you know you need to be online watching videos doing something don't just read your beauty and go to sleep and think yeah i know what i'm doing no you don't know what you're doing you know what's happening there but people are moving outside china okay you need to keep yourself moving. Um, so yeah, guys, these are my seven pointers on how to survive studying medicine abroad. Number one, acknowledge the fact that people are going to be doing different things from you. Number two, know what they're doing. Number three, get books and resources that they're using. Number four, do as much practical work as you can. Do electives, do whatever you can. Number five, stay on top of your game wherever you are. It doesn't matter where you're studying. At the end of the day, it's what's important is your grades, your skills, and your knowledge. Number six, have a support system. And number seven, do not get comfortable. I really hope these tips help you guys, um, you know, give you a new perspective and a new way of looking at things. I know a lot of people that study abroad tend to just kind of like get down, get their moral, um, you know, kicked to the curb, and they just feel down and out, and they just feel, oh, woe is me. But really that is not the way to go about life if you go about life thinking oh my problems is my problem is that you're not your problems how you react to the situation you're in is what defines you not the situation that you're actually in and so yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed this video please leave a like leave a comment subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i will see you in my next video bye